So what you see here on the slide in gray is the fungal cell. And the first thing that we're gonna talk about is how the fungal cell synthesizes components for structural integrity of the fungal plasma membrane. So just like how in human beings we use cholesterol to carry out different functions of the plasma membrane and give that plasma membrane structural integrity, the fungal cell also has something that is functionally identical to cholesterol and it's called ergosterol. So the, pla the, the fungal cell uses ergosterol to maintain integrity of its plasma membrane. So first we're gonna talk about how that, that product, that ergosterol, is synthesized. So you start with something called squalene and squalene gets converted into squalene epoxidase. Squalene epoxidase gets converted into lenosterol and then that lenosterol gets converted into the final product known as ergosterol. And it's that ergosterol, again, that is the fungal cells version of cholesterol, which gives its plasma membrane structural integrity. So I've depicted it here shown as these little pink boxes. It makes up the plasma membrane and allows for the certain passage of materials, cellular functions, etc. So the first drug that we're going to look at is one that prevents the formation of ergosterol. Now the conversion of lenosterol to ergosterol is done by an enzyme called 14-alpha-demethylase. And our first group of drugs is going to inhibit this enzyme. The drugs known as the azoles inhibit 14-alpha-demethylase. So drugs like clotrimazole, fluconazole, etraconazole, and ketoconazole. So these all end in azole. And it should make sense to you that by inhibiting the conversion of lenosterol to ergosterol, you can never make those little pink squares, which means you can never put them in the plasma membrane, which means that the plasma membrane of the fungal cell will not have structural integrity and it will die. So antifungal agents can kill funguses by preventing the formation of ergosterol, preventing the stability and integrity of their plasma membrane, leading to fungal cell death. So the azoles inhibit 14-alpha-demethylase. Now the step that converted squalene to squalene epoxide, so the, the first step, is done by an enzyme called squalene epoxidase. And with, there's one drug that inhibits this enzyme, squalene epoxidase, and that drug is terbinafine. So terbinafine will basically do the same thing that the azoles do, it just does it upstream. By inhibiting squalene epoxidase, you never end up forming ergosterol because you can never form the squalene epoxide, et cetera, et cetera. So terbinafine does pretty much the same thing as the azoles. It just does it at a different location. So you should know at this point in the video that terbinafine and the azoles all prevent the formation of ergosterol. Of course, they do it through different mechanisms and they break up the integrity and the structural component of the fungal cell plasma membrane. Now let's talk about some other things that go on in the fungal cell, and we'll also talk about some other antifungals. So just like humans, there's the plasma membrane, which we've already talked about, but there's also the outer cell wall. And that fungal outer cell wall starts with uh, components called beta-glucans. And these beta-glucans basically need to be activated from within the fungal cell and then transported through the plasma membrane out to the cell wall where they make up one of the outer layers of the fungal cell wall. And there's an enzyme that takes these beta-glucans and activates them and basically finalizes them as they move out to the outer cell wall. And that enzyme is called beta-glucan synthase. So beta-glucan synthase takes inactivated beta-glucans, activates them, puts on the final touches, and then transports them out to the fungal cell wall where they protect the fungal cell. Now the group of antifungals that inhibits this process is specifically going to inhibit beta-glucan synthase, and this is the echinocandins. These are drugs like capsofungin, so this group all ends in fungin, F-U-N-G-I-N. Capsofungin is an example of an echinocandin. So these are inhibiting beta-glucan synthase, preventing the activation of beta-glucans, which prevents the structural components that make up the fungal cell wall. So just like with the azoles and terbinafine, if you inhibit a process which creates a barrier on the outside of the fungal cell, you can kill the fungal cell. So that's how these work. 
Now the next group is amphotericin B and nystatin, and both of these substances are going to act on ergosterol, as you see on the bottom of this slide. What amphotericin B will do is it sort of wedges itself in between the different ergosterol components and creates these little holes or these little tears in the ergosterol plasma membrane. And by tearing little holes in the ergosterol plasma membrane, you can actually cause fungal cell death because once again, anytime you inhibit the integrity of the fungal cell, well, the fungal cell will simply die. So that's how amphotericin B and nystatin works. These are heavy duty agents. Amphotericin B is typically used in really bad systemic mycoses and nystatin is actually used, you may have heard of swish and swallow. It comes in um, a liquid that you can swish around your mouth for like esophageal candidiasis and things like that. So these are heavy, you know, heavier duty agents that are used in more severe fungal infections. The last group of antifungals that we should touch on are ones that act on either the DNA of the fungus or some type of component that's going on in the nucleus. So to simplify that, I'm going to draw in the nucleus here, depicted by this black square with this white strand of DNA in the center. And the two agents that inhibit the DNA and, and the mitotic process here are going to be flu cytosine and grisofulvin. So flu cytosine will specifically mess with the DNA of the fungus and grisofulvin will mess with the microtubules. So of course you need microtubules to undergo mitosis and pull apart your two cells as they split and that's what grisofulvin will inhibit. And flu cytosine will actually literally inhibit the DNA of the fungal cell because it wedges itself in there and gets converted to 5 uh, fluorouracil by cytosine deaminase. So if you look at the name, it's flu cytosine, and it's being converted to 5 fluorouracil by cytosine deaminase. So the name of the drug kind of tells you a little bit about the mechanism. So again, just to quickly summarize and really beat this into your head, flu cytosine inhibits the DNA of the fungal cell, and grisofulvin inhibits the microtubules, which would prevent mitosis in the fungal cell, okay? So they're working at the level of the, like the nucleus and the splitting of the cell or the DNA. So this slide is the summary of how all these different drugs work and on what part of the fungal cell that they work. Now let's overlay some really useful mnemonics to help you remember some things about these drugs. So I've put the mnemonics here in orange. Let's start at the top, echinocandins. So to remind you that echinocandins inhibit cell wall synthesis, echinocandin sounds like you kind of can't do. And I always remembered you kind of can't do cell wall synthesis if you give an echinocandin. So that's how I remember, remember that. You kind of can't do cell wall synthesis if you give echinocandins. For the azoles, well, the, the azoles prevent ergosterol, and I always used to say that the, as, the asshole drugs, these are asshole drugs, right? They, they really mess with the fungal cell. So these are azoles, and the azoles prevent ergosterol, and that kind of rhymes if you say it in the right way. The asshole will prevent ergosterol. So it rhymes, and it also is kind of funny because... I always remember, remember these as the asshole drugs. Like These are assholes, right? They, they just mess up the fungal cell. It's like the first line agent that's given. It's like, oh, you know, got a fungus, give them an asshole drug because the, the fungal cell perceives these drugs as assholes, okay? And they all end in azole, so it kind of works. For amphotericin B, remember ampho tear a sin a hole. So they tear a hole in the plasma membrane. Ampho tear a sin. They tear a hole. Okay, for terbinafine, I don't have a good mnemonic. Um, for flu cytosine, I'm not going to waste your time with one because the name of the drug sort of hints at the mechanism, uh, the conversion to 5-fluorouracil with FLU, and then it's done by cytosine deaminase. So flu and cytosine are literally in the name. So terbinafine and grexofulvin don't get a mnemonic. Echinocandin, well, you, you kind of can't do cell wall synthesis. You can ampho tear a sin. You tear a hole in the plasma membrane at ergosterol and the asshole drugs inhibit ergosterol. Okay, so those are my mnemonics. Um, you might find them useful. The last thing that we should talk about are the side effects of amphotericin B. So because this is the really heavy duty antifungal, it's got some heavy duty side effects. And what you should remember is amphlebitis, 
So amphotericin, you just say amphlebitis. This does cause phlebitis. This also is known to cause like repeated fever and chills. Um, you, as a general rule of thumb with any pharmacology, you should never memorize non-specific side effects. So if you ever see like fatigue or nausea, it's not worth memorizing. But this is one of the exceptions to that rule. Amphotericin B, for whatever reason, just causes uh, consistent fever and, and chill and fatigue. So the way that I remember that is I imagine being really cold because I have a fever. And when you're really cold, you, you know, you're like... You you know you're shivering so amphotericin that's how I always remember that like as if you had a fever and chills and you were so cold that you were kind of stuttering a little bit so amphotericin that's how I always memorize that fever chill um, recurrent presentation and then the last thing is amphotericin and the reason that I memorized amphotericin is because amphotericin B actually alters the permeability and the flow component um, of the nephron. So it can cause alteration of electrolyte levels, especially things like magnesium and potassium. So the flow through the nephron is altered because of changes in permeability. And I always memorize that by saying amphotericin because the flow through the nephron changed significantly which should also cue you that this causes nephrotoxicity, if that's not already obvious. So here's some easy ways to remember all of that. But again, this is the summary slide. I hope that I was able to simplify this for you. Antifungals are, are not too complex, but you, you do need to know their mechanisms. You have to keep the different enzymes you see here straight. Be able to compartmentalize this in your brain. I hope that the mnemonics are helpful. Don't forget this stuff about amphotericin. And that's it. Good luck.